Hello friends and welcome. Today I'm really excited to try a rather eclectic array of new makeup that I've had for quite a while, but which I just haven't gotten around to trying. Several of these products are a bit outside my comfort zone, and I quite honestly don't know if they'll all work together, but I thought it would be fun to at least give them a try. If you're new to this channel, I'm glad you stopped by today and welcome. This channel is all about helping those of us over 50 discover the most helpful makeup tips, techniques, and products so we can feel and look our very best. So before you leave today, I hope you'll subscribe if this content sounds like a good match for you. And I also want to give a warm welcome back to all of you who are already part of this wonderful family. Thank you. With that said, let's go ahead and check out this new makeup. I've already done my skin prep and I used a new product for my primer. I tried the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin in the shade 3 as my primer and then applied the light reflecting foundation from NARS over it. The Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin product is really an unusual and an innovative product. It's award-winning and it's described as a texture-reducing, coverage-boosting blurring balm that balances oil throughout the day while maintaining hydration. It can be used as a primer, which is what I did today, and it can be tapped over foundation to set the foundation. And it can also be used to add coverage. And if you want to highlight or contour with it, you can just go two shades lighter or deeper. It comes in 14 different colors, and one of the shades is universal and doesn't add coverage, but the rest of the shades are tinted. This product did a great job of blurring my pores, but I have to do a lot more experimenting with this product before I can really finalize my thoughts on it. Since my eyebrows seem to more and more have a mind of their own, I thought this Rare Beauty Brow Gel might be a good investment. It's a clear gel, and the description states that it shapes, lifts, and sets eyebrow hairs in place with a flexible hold that doesn't feel sticky or crunchy. It can be used alone or to set other brow products, and I'm going to use it to set my other brow products today. The description says to apply it in short, upward strokes, so let me give that a try. And before I start, I always like to rub off any extra product that seems to accumulate on the tip. So I'm going to try it with this brow, and I'm going to go upward. I did use the Maybelline Express Sculpt Brow earlier to cover my gray and white hairs, and that may be interfering with my ability to use this product, which is also a gel, but there we go. I think we're getting the brow hairs to look a little bit more defined. This brow has the gel from Rare Beauty on it, and this brow does not. I think it boils down to if you want your brow hairs more defined. And if you do, a brow gel that's like this, it's a laminating gel, takes it one step beyond any other kind of gel and works really quite well. Now it'll be interesting to see if my brows stay in this position <laughs> until the end of the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply it on the other brow so I match. <laughs> Next up is this beautiful eyeshadow palette from Melt Cosmetics. It's their Zodiac Water Eyeshadow Palette. There are also other color stories in this Melt Zodiac line. This is what the Earth palette looks like. Here's the Fire palette. And this is the Air Zodiac palette. One of my resolutions for 2024 was to try some new makeup brands, and in today's video I'm actually trying three brands that are new to me, including this eyeshadow palette from Melt. The eight shades in this palette are inspired by beach waves and the depths of the ocean, which probably isn't surprising seeing those colors. There are five mattes, two of which are neutral colors, and three shimmers. I always like to have more mattes than shimmers in a palette since for me it makes the eyeshadow palette more versatile. I'll start with the lightest neutral shade called Secretive in the middle of my crease and then I'll mix Secretive with the other neutral matte called Possessive and apply that in the outer part of my crease and lid. Here is Secretive and the dark brown on the lower right is Possessive which I'll be using next. And this is Refer Brush number 14. This is really a perfect transition color, and it's especially perfect if you have lighter skin. Now I'm taking the deeper shade called Possessive and going on the outer part of my crease and the outer part of my lid. Now 
now a little blending is in order. And I don't know if you can hear the noise upstairs <laughs> or not, but my husband is working on a project. So if you hear a little bit of a banging, <laughs> I apologize, and that's what's going on. In our new house, we have these light switches that unfortunately um, are motion detectors, but they manage to go off exactly when you need to have them on. Uh, so he's trying to fix that and also doing some other repair work. I'm really glad there's not a lot of fallout with these products because normally, as you know, I don't do my face makeup first. I always do my eye makeup first because of my concern about fallout on my face products. But so far, so good. Now, I could definitely just leave it at this, but since I want to try all of the colors, I'm going to dive right into the rest of them. I'll apply the lightest blue-green matte called Trust Issues on the inner corner of both eyes, the next deepest blue-green matte called Emo in the center of the lid, and the deepest matte blue called Ugly Crying on the outer crease and lid. Here is Trust Issues, and then on the bottom row you can see the mid-tone blue-green color called Emo, and here's the very deep blue called Ugly Crying. This is going to go on the inner corner, and I'm going to gradually get a little bit deeper. Then I'm going into the mid-tone color, which is a little bit deeper blue-green. And I'll blend those. And then I'm going in with this deepest color. And these formulas all seem to be blending in with each other easily. And then let's do a little bit blending here. And I want to bring a little bit more of this deeper color up. Now the one thing I wish this palette had, and actually it's something I wish every palette had, is a white because I would love to lighten this blue up even more. But I don't have a color that's going to allow me to do that, unfortunately. I am hardly seeing any fallout. That's amazing. Next, I want to try out the shimmer shade. So I'm going to apply the lightest blue shimmer called Moody on the center of the lid on one eye, and the darkest blue shimmer called Dead Inside on the outer corner of the lid. This is moody and dead inside is right below it. And because I don't want fallout, I'm going to spray the shimmer with a setting spray. I'm using my All Nighter Setting Spray from Urban Decay. Oh, that's pretty. And now I'm going in with a deeper color. Also use setting spray on this. And I'm just gonna pat the edges. I don't know if the setting spray is mixing real well with this eyeshadow formula. It doesn't seem to be blending really well. Let me go in with my finger and see if that will make a difference. There is a lighter shimmer called Manipulative. Um, I'm going to use it on the inner corner. See if I can lighten this up a bit. That is definitely helping. And I just want to see if I'm picking up any fallout. I am, but not a lot. A little bit more on the edge here to blend it. I think I definitely need some eyeliner and mascara, so I'm going to go ahead and apply that off camera along with concealer and corrector, and I'll be right back. Eyeliner and mascara applied, and I also took a white eyeshadow from one of my other eyeshadow palettes and included it on the inner corner of this eye and then tried to create a gradient on this matte side so there was a little bit more differentiation between the colors. So let's take a final look at these eyeshadows. First, the matte side. And now the side with the shimmer on it.
for blush today. I'll be applying one new e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand color in the shade Pink Me Up on one side of my face and another e.l.f. Halo Glow Beauty Wand in the shade Rose You Slay on the other cheek. These are definitely dupes for Charlotte Tilbury's far more expensive beauty wands. This e.l.f. product costs $9 and the Charlotte Tilbury product costs $42. So there's quite a price difference. And these have the squeeze tip applicators just like the Charlotte Tilbury products. But the difference, unfortunately, is with this e.l.f. product, there's no little dial that you can turn to make the product stop coming out of the little sponge tip applicator. There is a turn off switch like that on the Charlotte Tilbury. So I have a hunch what's going to happen is that these e.l.f. products are going to get pretty darn messy because the product can keep squeezing out. I hope that's not the case, but I'm afraid that may be happening. This is the shade Pink Me Up, and I'm just going to take a stippling brush and blend that in. Or you could do it with your fingers too. If you do use a brush, I highly recommend a stippling brush because it's less likely to disturb the makeup underneath. And then just patting it in rather than buffing it and brushing it makes a big difference too. That's a really pretty soft color. And on this side, I'm applying Rose You Slay. It isn't quite as pink. Whoops, got a little much there. Let's see if it blends out. Yeah, these really blend out nicely. That is a really pretty soft, more of a neutral pink. I'm just going to go around the edges a bit just to soften the edges. I think you can get a good idea of what these look like from some swatches, so let me show you the swatches. Pink Me Up is on top and Rose You Slay is beneath it. I do like the additional glow that these blushes provide rather than a matte finish. Well, even though these e.l.f. products are glowy, we're going to add a little bit more glow on one side of my face by applying the Say Beauty Glow Sculpt Highlighting product in the shade Pink Glow. This Say Beauty product comes in five shades, and Say Beauty is a clean beauty brand. The finish of these combination blush and highlighter products has a glow produced by micro pearls and not glitter. Let's take a look at what it looks like. And here's the Pink Glow, which is a very light pink. And one thing I really like about this product is that these are refillable. So once you go down to the bottom of a pan, you can pop it out and then put in the refill, which obviously isn't as expensive as the original product. So let's take a look at a swatch first. I hope you can see this. It is so light. It's really more of a highlighter than a blush, but it does come in some deeper shades. And there's one called Mauve Glow that I really want to experiment with. So I'm going to add a little bit of this. Oh, oh, you can see how much more glow I'm getting. That's really pretty. And this blends in very easily. Oh, I like this a lot. That is really a wonderfully soft looking glow. So this is the Say Beauty side. And this side just has the e.l.f. Halo glow. And it looks to me like there's a lot more glow with the Say Beauty side, but let me know your thoughts. And finally, the lips. First, I'll apply my L'Oreal Age Perfect Lip Liner, and then I'm going to go ahead and use a MAC lipstick, which I have not used in years. But I just had to give this one a try, and you'll understand why when you see the color. It's the shade Everybody's Heroine in their Silky Matte Formula. Here's a swatch of the MAC lipstick. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm first putting on my Lawless Lipstick in Little Lady Daisy to give a good base. This will also lighten up the MAC lipstick a little bit. And I also have a couple of new Lawless lip glosses, one called Lavender Sorbet, which is a fairly light lavender color, and another one called Violet Bloom, which is deeper. I'll swatch these for you. 
Lavender Sorbet is a much lighter color and Violet Bloom is much brighter. Since the MAC lipstick is so bright, I'm going to go ahead with the softer color in the Lawless Lip Gloss. So this is the Lavender Sorbet Lip Gloss over the MAC color. color. And here's the final look. Well, there definitely were no fails among these products. In fact, I really liked all of them, and that really doesn't happen very often. The Melt Cosmetics eyeshadow palette is really a lovely color story, but I do wish there were one even lighter color so we could differentiate the colors a little bit more. The Rare Beauty Brow Gel gave my brows a little bit more natural look by providing some definition to individual brow hairs, which is a look that I personally really like. The e.l.f. Halo Glow Wands come in beautiful colors, and I really like the extra glow they provided. And I absolutely loved the Say Beauty Cream Blush Highlighter Combo since it created a gorgeous finish. It glided on so beautifully and created a lovely soft focus look, which I love. And I'm already a huge fan of Lawless Lip Glosses, and I'm absolutely thrilled that they've come out with these beautiful lavender and violet colors. Well, thank you so much for joining me today as I checked out these new products. I look forward to being with you again next Thursday. And until then, I wish you good health and happiness. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.